Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Today we're going to tackle the Commandos from Kill Team Octarius, which will soon have their own separate boxed release, which I'm really looking forward to because the option of picking these guys up individually sure suits me better than those big boxes all the time. <laughs> but they're really cool kits and there is a little bit of modularity to them, letting you swap and change things around. So this fella, this orc boy, he hasn't got quote unquote the correct head, but it was easy enough to swap in the one with the little cap comforter because I thought that looked a bit cooler. I love the look of the commando style commandos. Now today's video was made possible with the assistance of kutami.de or kutami.de for those of us of a uh, English speaking persuasion. Now kutami is a tabletop gaming store where you can pick up uh, miniatures, card games, all that sort of carry on. And they also have an online store which ships all around the EU and as well still the UK too. Though be advised, there might still be some customs charges. You just got to look out for those at the moment. So thank you very much to Pascal for sending these along. I would not have been able to do this without that assistance. So all of the paints for this will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now it might be something of a surprise that I've actually started by priming this fella with Zandri Dust. Now I've done this because most of the colors that we're going to apply over the top of it are going to give us much better coverage versus starting from a black or even a green. Uh, you could start from even Mechanica Standard Grey here, but this slightly pale brown is going to work really well for everything I've got in mind. And it is going to be the basis for the uh, equipment that he's carrying, so that keeps it nice and simple. Now to start off, because it's an area that we're likely to end up hitting with other colors as we go, we're going to start by painting his skin. And for this, I'm actually going to start with Lauren Forest. Now, when I were a lad, if we go back that far, <laughs> Uh, orcs got darker, like their skin got darker the more they fought. They were considered tougher, and that was how that was shown visually. And I always kind of figure that commandos are the type that they do a lot of fighting, but they don't get up close. And kind of a hallmark of how they fight is they don't get hit. So I don't want to do this guy with really dark skin. And now I have painted orcs on the channel before, and if you want to do a darker start, you could start with Warg Flesh here. Uh, but it is up to you. I'm going to start with this. And I think we're going to end up with a fairly, you know, a darker skin color than this, obviously, because we're going to shade it. Uh, that's the reasoning behind this Lauren Forest. You'll find it covers fairly well, but in some areas you are going to want to come back and give it a second coat. You'll probably find in some areas you do want to come back and even give this a third coat. Um, just along the back of his neck here is one spot where, because it's quite flat and exposed, any little imperfections will show up. So let that dry thoroughly before applying your second coat, and then after that you can be the judge of whether or not you do need to go as far as a third. Now when it comes to commandos, commandos tend to be blood axes, one of the clans of the orcs, and they tend to have a pretty good idea of what camouflage is, although they don't always know quite... <laughs> How it's supposed to work. But in the case of commandos, these are the orcs that get around by virtue of actually knowing what they're doing. So we're going to go for a reasonable, if perhaps not correct, camouflage. And once his trousers are red, we're going to turn to a little bit of black and a medium layer brush. Doesn't need to be anything more complex than this. What we're going to do is just start drawing some wiggly black lines on his trousers. Don't worry too much if they're not the right shapes or if they overlap one another or any number of things. Just black wigglies is going to work fine here. Now when it comes to making these shapes, if you've ever drawn like a, a seagull on a sheet of paper when you were a kid and it was just that funny little inverted mustache shape, that's how I've started and then added just another line in some areas to make this kind of jaggedy fork shape. It's funky, you know, it's not necessarily correct, but it looks about right, and that's what we're going for. What I've got now is my small layer brush, and I've thinned out just a little bit of white scar. Not too much, because all I want to do is just add close to some of these, just a dot and a dot. And then over here I'll do a dot, and a dot. And here I'll do a dot 
and I'm sure you see the pattern here. <laughs> what I'm going to do is quite close to any of the little black wigglies, I'm going to add just a couple of dots of white. Now once you've finished with that, it's going to look fairly random, and I do recommend try and shift the angle that you're popping those dots on with, but that looks pretty cool. That's actually not too far off real camo, it doesn't really work, but that's perfect for outwalks. Now I'm going to paint in his shirt, and I'm not going to bother putting a camo pattern on this, because so much of him is going to be covered up by his webbing and other gear, so you're going to kind of lose that effect. I'm using Mechanicus Standard Grey, because this kind of works with our red, um, but you could do anything you liked here. You might even choose to go back to Zandri Dust for this. Now to my mind, this is when you start seeing him come together. Now it's up to you whether you go for the straps on his pack being a leather color, uh, but I'm going to do them as Zandri Dust in order that they match with what he's wearing there. But there are a few leather areas, and for those I'm going to use Mournfang Brown. This covers very well, and as well, if you get any on the little areas which are going to be metal later, don't worry, it's really only going to help. Now as well as his belt and any other leather details, I did notice that these straps across his chest, they have a kind of a texture on them, uh, but the one across his shoulders here doesn't, so I figured that might be a different material. I've painted in as a leather color. Doesn't really matter if you want to leave it Zandri Dust, but I do think it adds a little bit of extra detail up there, which looks a bit interesting. And we're going to paint in the woolen details, and for this I have Steel Legion Drab, so his cap comforter, and his socks. Because <laughs> I love the little bundled up woolen socks, eh? And now with a little bit of Zandri Dust, we'll do some cleanup on his pack, straps, and what have you. It'll be good practice to go over most of the Zandri Dust areas with this, because the primer will still look a very slightly different color. So this won't take very long at all. Just give everything a quick bash of this. One detail I was about to forget was his stick grenade. So I've got a little dryad bark, and we're going to paint this onto the wood. Now we're going to briefly go back to our black, and I'm going to black in his boots. Um, you could do these in a brown if you fancied, uh, but personally, I like them black. Now we'll go back to a nice small brush, and I have here a little Ushapti bone. I'm just going to flick in his nails and his teeth if he's got any of those showing. Now this particular fella, he does have a couple of teeth uh, hanging from the back of his pack here as trophies. You could also here use Morgast Bone, uh, which is a little darker and a little more yellow. So if you like that look, give that a try. But Shabti Bone, I think once we've shaded it, is going to look fine. Now at last, we're hitting the home stretch with our base coats. And now it's time to make a decision about what color you want to use for the metal. Now I'm going to go for Lead Belcher, because I like quite a dark metal with my Orcs. And once we've shaded this, this is really going to come down. You might even go as far down as Iron Warriors, which is a really dark gunmetal kind of color, and shade it, it'll look almost black, which is cool, but not quite what I fancy for these guys. So I'm going to use my medium base brush for most of this, you know, I'm just going to splatter this on. And then when I get to any smaller areas of detail, like around these little patches on its chest here, I'm going to paint these in, because these are studded, so I'm going to paint them in as little armoured patches, and I'm going to swap to a smaller brush for the rest of those. Now what I'd suggest is when it comes to these little details like buckles and what have you, on an army, don't bother painting them. You know, you're not going to see them across 80 to 120 orcs on the table. But if you are doing just a kill team, then that little bit of extra work is really going to make a difference. Now, once all of these base coats are done, you can go around and do any tidy up that you need to. I added just a little bit of metallic in that rip there, and that was pretty cool. And then I've given my Agrax Earthshade a really good shake. And let's go ahead, big old brush, and we're going to apply this fairly generously over the entire miniature. So work quick. Make sure that you are jamming it into any recesses, any big pools, and honestly on Orcs, you probably don't need to worry too much, but as you can see, this is a fairly <laughs> quick and messy job. 
Let's come back in about half an hour once this is dried and have a look at what we've got. And after our 30 minutes, this is what you'll have. And like I always say, from here you could quite happily base them and put them on the table. There's plenty of detail there and that shading looks pretty cool, but I think we can take them further. So I've got here a little bit of Tyrant Skull and a wee old makeup brush that I'm going to use as a dry brush. Uh, you could quite happily use a small dry brush as well. Work off most of the Tyrant Skull into a bit of kitchen towel and we'll just lightly slick along the edge of his base there to get an idea of what we'll leave behind. And then on his pack I am going to very lightly flick along the edges of detail and get a nice quick highlight there. Simple as. So I'm going to do this over all of the pack. Now I decided that I would try and dry brush the straps on his chest and shoulders anyway and they came out alright. I got just a little bit of the tyrant skull on his uh, shirt but that's not a problem because we're going to highlight that now anyway. So with some Dawnstone I can tidy up those little bits of tyrant skull by essentially highlighting over them and hiding them and we'll do a little bit of this on his sleeves as well. Now that whole saying of less is more, no, less is less, more is more, but in this case less will look better. And that's nice and quick and looks reasonably good once you're finished. Now we're going to highlight his trousers and whatever color that you've chosen to do as the main color for the camo, I'd recommend just highlight that. Don't bother with the black or the white. So I have here some Wazdaka red and I'm going to pick out areas like this crease in his trousers here. As soon as I find where the end of my brush is, there we go. Highlight some of the areas of red. Now Wazdaka red goes on really bright, uh, but as it dries this will look much better. But yeah, as much or as little of this as you want to add. Now that won't take terribly long to do and I think it adds a lot to the camo pattern. It'll really help the miniature stand out on the table too. What we'll move on to is actually finally highlighting a skin and for this I'm going to use Strachan Green and this is pretty simple with Orcs because they have such big muscles. So what I'm going to do is paint over most of the areas of skin with my Strachan Green but leave just a little bit of that shaded color in the recesses. Same as if we were painting a human but using different colors. So if you've just watched the uh, Katachan painting guide, there's probably some good uh, <laughs> good ideas there too. So yeah, you can use this as a stage to basically bulk out some of the muscle shapes. Same too when you get near his face. You can paint over most of it and leave the grungy recesses. Now as mentioned earlier, this is a time-consuming method, uh, but it's actually really simple and I think looks pretty cool once you're done. The neat thing about these guys is that they are built with very human-ish musculature, so it's good practice for painting humans as well. If you do want to go just a fraction further, I've got here a little Ogren camo, and this has a very slightly yellow cast to it. So what I'm going to do is just a few final little details. And this is really up to how far you want to take this guy. So again, if you're just painting an army of orcs, probably not worth the extra effort. But for your kill teams, you know, you've got 10 guys on the field or however many it is, that little bit of extra work is going to pay off. Now, as I mentioned, that is a bit of extra work, but totally worth it, I think. The last thing I'm really going to do will be to dry brush a little bit of Baneblade Brown onto the woolen details. And for this, well, Baneblade Brown isn't a dry paint, but back in the day we used to dry brush with whatever we had. So make sure that you are getting most of your paint off the brush and do your little test along the edge of your base or wherever you need to to make sure that you're leaving next to nothing behind here. And then very carefully just make a few passes over some of those areas of the wool. And you'll see it takes a little bit of time to build up, but once you do, you've got a nice quick highlight. And yeah, that will work with any paint you're using. Now at this stage I've discovered, I do want a slightly darker, smokier sort of blackened steel effect on some of the metal. 
So with just a little bit of known oil, I'm going to apply a coat over what we've done already, and then we'll leave that to dry. Now once that's dried, you've got a cool smoky gunmetal effect, but there is one last, for real last stage this time. I have a little bit of scrag brown that I've watered down almost to the consistency of a wash. And this is our grime wash. I'm just going to paint this into a few areas where I want a real rusty, ragged appearance to this gear. So I'm going to be fairly sparing with it on the weapons. You know, I don't want his, his equipment to look like it's not functional, but around studs and rivets and what have you, just a quick splash of this will look super cool. Now that adds just a little bit of visual interest to the metal without taking a whole amount of work. You don't even have to highlight from here. And in fact, I'm not going to. I'm going to take him outside now, hit him with a matte varnish, and then pop a very simple base on him. I will put the base recipe in the description at the bottom of the paint list. So if you want to see how that's done, it's just splattering some paint stuff on. But let's get a look at this dude once he is all finished. And there at last, our Orc Commando is complete. Now I've had a lot of fun painting this guy, and I'm actually quite pleased with the result. Like I said, a little more involved than previous Orc stuff I've done, but if you have seen those, then this might be interesting as a way to go a little bit further. So thank you once again to Pascal at Kutami for sending these guys along. Could not have done this without your assistance. As well, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Jimmy, and Fred. Your support really makes a difference, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.